Ooh, academics love a cheeky bit of referencing and EndNote is a tool that allows you to do just that. So when you first sign in, you get this. So you have to download it from their website to your computer and then it asks you to set up an EndNote library. You've got open an existing library or create a new library. So when you click here, you'll be taken to here and you can call it whatever you want. Um, but I've already got a library and I've put it here. So I'm gonna open up this one and once you open it, it springs into life. This is what you get. So so, um, first of all, when you sort of like log in, you get this, all references and it's all blank, there's no references. It's split up into three very simple sections. The one on the far left is this one where you can sort of like navigate all of the references that you eventually import and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you've got recently added, unfiled, you've got groups which is essentially just folders, a way to collect ideas and themes of your research. You've got tags, you've also got find full text, groups and also on online search. So this is a very powerful toolbar that you'll be using a lot when you're using EndNote. Then in the middle we've got this one where we've got uh, essentially all of the references that we will be uh, looking at uh, depending on what bar we've got clicked here. So all references will be everything you've ever added to this library and then recently added will be recent ones. You get the idea, that's how you do it. Um, and then over here you'll get the information from the reference. So before we start we need to actually add a reference. Oh, and by the way, you get this toolbar up here with so many different tools. We'll talk about the most important ones in a minute, like this one, Cite While You Write. That one's pretty cool. Um, okay then, so you've got three ways, four ways, yes, four magical ways that you can upload references. The first way and the most annoying way is to do it manually. So you click here, add a new reference. You can also click Control N and then you get this uh, window where you can then edit all of the information. So you can start putting Stapleton, um, AJ, that's me, then the year 2012, oh, that's 20, 2012, title, the best paper ever written. Brilliant, this is going so well. You can also add a PDF if you've got some PDFs here, um, and also you can edit and PDF, you can do both uh, in the, at the same time with uh, that tab. I don't know why that's there. But when you're ready to save it, you can do it from this one or you can go edit and just save. And then what you'll see is save, save, save. Five hours later. And then with that selected, you can see on the side, this is where you'll get all the information you've just put in. But that is the most boring way to put stuff into EndNote. You'll spend hours doing this. Don't do it that way, do it this way instead. You can go down here to online search. So here you've got um, all of the online uh, databases that you can search directly from EndNote. If there's one in there that you want to search that isn't there at the moment, you click add and look at all of these. There are so many. And the thing about this being sort of used by institutions a lot, is you do get access to all of the library catalogs um, of the institutions, which is very, very nice touch. That's why this costs the big bucks. The other ones I've talked about, like Mendeley and Zotero, are free. So um, here we go, this is all the stuff. So you can go and search those, but I'm gonna go to PubMed, and then you can see that you end up with this uh, tab, and you can normally find uh, papers from their author and year. That's what I do anyway. Um, but in this uh, PubMed, I'm not expected to be be found, but I'm sure there are plenty of other Stapletons. So let's have a look. Stapleton search. Oh, look at all these clever relations. You've got all of these that you can choose from. And then if you click here, um, you can see it turns up here. And then you can add this to your references by clicking this button. Add the selected online records to your local library. So I'll click that. And then one thing you'll see is if I go to all references, then that has been added and it's got all of the information much, much easier than adding it manually. And there are a couple of, that's something in my ear. Okay. There are a couple of other ways as well. The first way that you can uh, do this is by using the online sort of like search engine of journals. You can get whatever you want from the journal webpage directly. Um, let's say you want to go in here, the Physical Education Hall of Shame. <laughs> That's what I'm in, 100%. Um, and then you've got all of these buttons. Normally, no matter what journal it is, you've got like cite this article. So you click the cite this article and then you'll get download citations and you'll choose the format but ultimately you click here, download citations, you can save, and then what will happen is, 
you will double click this and it will import it automatically into your reference list. And here you can see this is imported references, which is why there's only one in there. If we go to all references, there it is. It's nice in there. Love it, love it, love it. So that's the easy way. The last way is by using something called EndNote Click, where you end up with this little button. This is one of my papers from 2011. And you can see here that there's no really like obvious, here we are, export citation and abstract. So we would click on RIS to extract that one. But also we get this little button down here. Look at that little cute little button doing its thing. If we click on that, um, you will get, get taken to where you can actually find that information. Here, it wasn't in my locker. It didn't find a PDF and it's not open access. So it's asking to search the institution library. Then it's going away and asking my institution library. Um, but if there is a open access paper here that is able to be imported to your uh, library, it will let you know and you can just sort of like import it directly. Let's try to find one actually. It's open access, boom. So now you can see it's changed to view PDF. And then we can view on PDF. It opens up in this like end note, click end note sort of thing. And then you can see you've got this export reference. We can export reference and then it goes here. And we can obviously then just save it straight to our end note um, library. Yes, that's what it's called. All right, there it is just there. And you can see recently added. And if I go here, there it is in all of my references. Super easy. That's how you add stuff, but it gets even more powerful. Check out this. It can get really confusing once you've got loads of stuff in your reference manager, but you can easily find duplicates. All you need to do is come up to library here and find duplicates. You click here and it says no duplicate reference is found. But if we import a duplicate reference, if I go to all references and click library and find duplicates, it will go through and you can see here it's got the find duplicate box and um, you can look through and see what's the same or different. If there's anything different about them, it'll be highlighted in blue, but ultimately you wanna keep the one that has the most information. And then you click here or here for keep this reference. Let's keep the first one. And then it's got rid of all of the duplicates and you would do that for each duplicate in your life. <sniffs> Groups are a really nice way to group your ideas and themes of your research. If you're writing a paper, you could group all the references for that paper. If you're writing an essay, you could group all the references for that essay. You get the idea. But there's something that you should know about that is particularly powerful, and it's called smart groups. If you head up here, groups, and then create a smart group, essentially you get this pop-up box, which means that you can then group things together automatically based on some rules. So if I want all of my Stapleton stuff, I can click create and then you can see it's here. I got my smart group here and it automatically looks at all of the authors that are mentioned uh, by Stapleton and it puts it there. That will update as well in the future. It's a great way to filter out some of the papers as you're sort of like doing your research, takes away that effort and just makes it super obvious and easy. Love it. I know what you're thinking. Andy, we know what this is now. How do we use it in Word? Well, let me show you my cheeky little friend. Here, we're gonna head to Word. So when you install EndNote, you'll automatically get this little tab on your Word, EndNote 21. And you can see that you've got these panels here. This is the one you'll be using the most. And this is insert citation. You've also got go to EndNote, edit and manage citations, edit library or reference. And then you've got styles where you can select the style. You can update the citations and bi bibliography. Um, you can also convert it to plain text if you're delivering it to someone someone that they don't have EndNote and you've got all of the, uh, these other sort of like less important tools as well. So let's say we've got something we want to reference. Andy is the most uh, attractive man on YouTube. Fantastic, thank you very much. Now we need to go find some references. So I can say insert citation, boom. And then I can go here and find citation. So I'm looking in my library. <coughs> Oh, no, no matching records. So if I type in what I'm looking for, Stapleton in a year normally does it. Then I click find, search in my libraries. Then we've got this one, best paper ever written. That sounds like me. So I'm gonna insert that one and it will add the citation and also add automatically a bibliography. In Zotero or Mendeley, you have to do that manually. You have to say, I want the bibliography or reference list here. Here it just does it for you. So this is the 
citation and this is the reference list. If we want to change this, we can highlight it and then say edit and citation manager. If we've got more here, we can choose what order they're in. Um, we can also sort of like just see what's going on with that particular citation, which is really great. And down here, you've got export traveling library, which is really important if you're sending this to someone who also uses EndNote. Um, and you can also delete or remove a citation as well. Now, the important thing is, is that you can add, remove citations citations, but obviously you need to format it for the journal that you're submitting it to. So up here we can see that we've got all of the different styles and if you click select other style, you have got so, so many styles. Look at all of this. But if you can't find it there, and I doubt you'll struggle, you can head over to the output styles um, from EndNote and you can see that you've got so many, many more. You've got 752 tabs of this style stuff. So you just download this, super easy. Then it will give you that reference style in EndNote for Word, which is fantastic. So there we are, we're gonna click down here um, and that's essentially how you add references, super great. Now, the issue is, is that if you're sending this to somewhere that doesn't have EndNote, you have to go up here and say, convert citations and bibliography, and you have to convert to plain text. And you'll say that this has not yet been saved, suggest you save the document, and also it won't link up to your library anymore. It'll just be plain text, which is absolutely fine. So I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say save, and then there we are, it's in plain text, and it will remove the link, which means you can easily send this somewhere that doesn't have EndNote, if it actually works. <laughs> so there we are, that's how you use EndNote. It's super powerful, it's quite expensive, but make sure your university pays for it. If not, go check out this video where I talk about Zotero, which is my personal favorite um, open access reference manager. It's linked to a load of AI tools as well, go check it out.